Can't escape your fate now. Kaguya-sama is the number two anime on Mal. Yeah, I noticed that too, Rhett. <laughs> I knew it was going to slip, but it is sad seeing Brotherhood back on top. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is, isn't it? You know, maybe if I watch Kaguya-sama and give season, I would have to give it a 10. You can't even give it a 9 to raise the score. <laughs> nope. <laughs> wow, Hunter Hunter 2011 is number 9. It's, it's, that was really funny when you ambushed me with, Hey, John, the version you watch seems much shittier. <laughs> I don't know. I was just... I had never considered that the 99 one was anything. And then I was like, wait, wait, this looks kind of this looks interesting. It? Yeah. Yeah. Fool. You like FMA better than Brotherhood. Why would you ever think the older version is worse? <laughs> but again, the popular opinion is vastly stacked towards the, the new one. Yeah, well, it, it just covers a lot more stuff, which is nice, but it's I could very easily see it old yeah. one being a little stronger like just those pictures you shared of like the the mood in some of those in big se like the That's climax the of season one being in a very bright room yeah versus in the original when it was actually pretty moody or like that's the thing is manga's black and white so like mm -hmm. they have to assume these things and i think having everything just be brightly lit because oh the background was white in the original you know <laughs> a little unimaginative and not having things like time of day or lighting. Oh my God, life is good. Just looking, <sighs> all is well. It was so weird go, well, I'll save that. All right, I've got my thing. I've got my stuff all Laird out. I think about how to talk about these shows on the podcast for like a week. And as then I'm you watching just, them. And your brain completely and then, vomits it out. And then fucking head empty now. I'm on vacation, head empty. <laughs> Did I watch anime? I don't remember. <laughs> God, when was the last one even? July 4th. Holy moly. It's been a minute. Well, we it's had to we minute. had to we had to push another week and make it a month again because John had company. Yeah. yeah, that was really nice. That was a good weekend. But now we have the all important podcast, so that's going to basically be just as magical and perfect. Oh yeah, always a banger. Absolutely. Oh, we're streaming. Oh, I told you we were going live it did say that literally yeah. literally four minutes ago i said hey i'm pressing the button we're going live and i'm tweeting it out i don't know i just forgot to open the chat Boop. hello friends hello ponchi poncho awful quiet in here <laughs> <laughs> well i've got just a lot of pop. I, I'm literally coming off of like basically doing two movies back to back. So I'm just like, boom. And, and four things yesterday. Yep. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just like, how the fuck do you do it? Jetstorm's doing what Rhett would rather be doing. <laughs> is, it, it, is it Xenoblade 3? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. played about a half an hour of that last night. It was like, okay, uh, I'm going to go finish Better Call Saul. <laughs> I need to get, I need to get. Netflix or something because I need to catch up. Uh, season six is not on Netflix. It's not going to be for a while, but I haven't seen season five. Yeah. So that's what I'm I'm just letting you know. I'm, I'm doing the same thing of I watch. I signed up for Netflix for season five. Yeah. And then I'm just going to buy season six on Amazon. Uh, also, like the, the, the stream is dropping all the frames in the world. Yeah, I can hear you turned into a robot. Awesome. It happens. It happens. I still, need to watch, I still need to watch season four and five and six of Breaking Bad. <laughs> oh, oh, you did. Jesus. Four, five, and six. Just shotgun the whole thing, huh? 
I should probably. It's been a decade. I should probably. Somebody that like I somebody like like I recently told me that they wanted to watch that series, and I told them that I would watch through it with them uh, slowly oh. over time if they wanted to. So we're gonna do that. That's gonna be a project. Nice. Uh, that'll awesome. take a while because that's six seasons, thirteen episodes a piece. I think the first season's only seven. Um, yeah. But it's like it's honestly really fun to do have like a virtual show watch along like yeah. I did Crazy Ex Girlfriend over like six months and that yeah. was just delightful. Yeah. <sighs> Basically, I think my I think my big um, what's the word um, epiphany to share will be about how to hack your brain so that you can be as neurotic about engaging with other kinds of media as you are with JRPGs. A universal kind of a universally useful thing to share, I think. Unlock right. the power of your ADHD. <laughs> there you go. Or less. Oops, you to disable that command. Delete. Oh. Get out of here. There you go. I had a Nightbot command still active from the power wash. Uh, yeah, I see that. Paul, you seem a little tuckered out. Hey. Hey. We'll get there. So wait, wait, we'll there, get there. We'll get there. Can, yeah, we can get your, get y'all, get <laughs> that energy up with a good, with a nice shot of all that good chatter that you oh, yeah. <laughs> know gonna, and love. It's going to be God, great. I'm so very good at this. It's going to be real good. It's going to be real good, Polly. I am going to literally drink coffee to get through this. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm dr I drink water. I'm drinking water. It was, it was, it. I made it funny. See, that's called, uh, that's ah, called, that's called, uh, that's called, called that's energy, baby. <laughs> I'm a professor. I've been doing this for eight years. I know a thing or two about getting motivated. There you go. I also know a thing or two about being able to sit back creatively and make people think I'm paying attention when I'm really not. So I'll let you decide. I'll let you decide when I'm doing which. Fuck. <laughs> Welcome to Soxcast episode 158. Coming at you live in glorious poop sound. I don't even know what that means, but we're going with it. Everybody likes right. Yeah, it does. If like if this episode was going to be brought to you by anything, any kind of technology, I feel like the word poop and or fart would be in it. You could just call it fart poop and that would be it. That's the technology that makes the podcast happen. Absolutely. That's, That's right. right. After I had a bunch of left, I have a bunch of really good leftover um, white chicken chili mm -hmm. and it's just a block you just drop a block of cream cheese in it when you're making it so i got i got a nice jump nice blast of that big uh big chili fan aren't you you're a big chili, chili fan yeah i love chili poly not a big i'm not a chili fan because i got a problem with beans uh, what it was, it was texture I, right i hate what do you mean you have a i hate beans i can't uh, they, it's I'm, the texture uh, we're, do we're done here they taste like fucking sand i love fucking beans they taste I like sand on my tongue it's <laughs> I, I, I can... go to taco bell i say give me the fucking bean burrito i don't need anything else <laughs> man just pack that thing full of double meat get those fucking beans out of there I can't do beans. Beans are just I I don't know whether it's just like a like a things taste different to different people, but the texture to me for beans is anytime I bite into a bean, it literally feels like my mouth gets filled with sand. Weird. It is the most gross thing. It's just like I've tried so many variations of beans in my life and they all just have this like you you're biting into like a, a kidney and then there's sand in the kidney and it just envelops your mouth and tongue and it feels like I've got this fucking gross grime affixed to my tongue and it just I immediately need mm. to vomit. Man. Yeah, beans are like I, just no bueno for me. No bean. It's like I can almost con it's like I can almost conceptualize it, like how the how bean could come across that way, but then not quite. Right. Kind of pretty yeah I, I, feel, I feel like i get it i fucking love beans. i hear you but i'm just like 
Oh, but they're good. <laughs> if you, I sure. If you, if yeah. you like the taste of dirt in your mouth. <laughs> now let's not throw stones. Let's not throw stones. Well, no, because I'm throwing dirt instead. Well, we're throwing sand. It gets everywhere. Pockets, pocket beans. Polly's weakness. Yeah, there you go. Pocket beans. That's all. It's all you got to do. Yep. All you got to do. But yeah, we're here. We're podcasting. And to my immediate virtual right, pepperoni and green peppers, mushrooms, olive chives. It's red. But no, but no beans. But no beans. <laughs> Weird that you're a vegetarian and I still left pepperoni in there, though. No, no buen, bueno. No bueno. No bino. That didn't work. No, it not No, you're not gonna make. You're not gonna do any kind of amalgamation of pepperoni that's gonna turn into bean anything. That ain't gonna work. That's just bad. That's that is probably the worst attempt at wordplay I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, I'm gonna give you that. that. I'm gonna give you the award for the worst attempt at wordplay I've ever heard in my life. You know, it's it's still something. It's an award. They say your you know, generation. They, they say your generation always wants awards. Well, there you go. I got you one. There you go. It was one of the jokes of all time. There you go. It was one. <laughs> no, Bino. See, now I can't. Now I can't like that main character. Damn it. There it goes. Don't want to chow down on somebody's dick because their name's got Bean in it. What? 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 I didn't say anything. What? What? No. What'd you say? What? I didn't say I think somebody talked about I think somebody talked about going down on a deck. Somebody, I don't know. <laughs> like I think it was probably just interference from the Twitch channel next door or something. Are you are you roboting again? Is there a robot that wants to suck dick here? Maybe. 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 I've read that VN. <laughs> there it is. Thank you, John. <laughs> uh, you're ready for a podcast, aren't you, Rat? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you are. I can tell. You got that vim and vigor going. I am. It's, it's stuff uh, full of anime to talk about. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's the stuff full of anime excitement. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I don't hear. <laughs> what? I just see the world in subtitles now. Oh, it's, I mean, appropriate. <laughs> appropriate. I mean, I do have. I do have my videos. My, my, my videos do get closed captioned, so. You could catch me until you could catch me with subtitles. Oh. Are you are you are you a put closed captions on all the time, even with in English stuff? Yeah. Oh you, no no no. I do oh, sometimes. I do Polly, sometimes. Love is over. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> just depends. Like I I don't know. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. It just depends. Sometimes I guess it depends. there are some yeah. shows on TV that are mixed very badly. There are some movies yeah. that are mixed very bad. That is a very common problem with movies right now. Is that dialogue mm -hmm. is mixed terribly. So it's I've not. Seen, yeah. It's not weird that I watch some movies and TV with closed captions on, despite the fact that I can hear. Yeah, I yeah. don't think it's weird at all. I saw things. I, I, I think I was going to say was um, some TV shows have people with extremely thick British accents. Uh, mm, that right. too. All right. Turn yeah, on I, subtitles. I saw a thing saying, oh, Zoomers love subtitles. And then the reply was just, no, everything is mixed like shit now. Oh. You needed to fucking understand the dialogue. Oh, wow. Okay. Like, you're I'm not, not the, the only person. one. Okay. You're not the only person I've seen say that. Yeah. in like the last week yeah you go and watch something that that was taped in the 90s early 2000s and listen to the way the dialogue is mixed and you come to do something like a movie yeah. in 2022 and the way that it is mixed now it is there is a huge difference in how that is handled and it is absolutely yeah. fucking awful agreed all right well i'm glad i'm not the only one that noticed that because that's something yeah. that's been a it's something that's been in my craw for a while now but the fact that somebody else has mentioned it Makes me feel less crazy. Beepner pointing out Netflix Castlevania has British accent accents and is mixed terribly. <laughs> Great. A lot of people argue that the Xenoblade games are the same. Those games are real, real British. <laughs> no. Could be. Could be. To my immediate virtual Never. left, by the time you realize he's gone, he'll already be boiling hot dogs for somebody else. It's John Thayer. Hi. Hi. That's me. I'm always it boiling is. hot dogs, folks. For folks like betraying trust by boiling people's hot dogs. Betraying trust by boiling people's hot dogs. That's my new album. 
That, all right. <laughs> Cannot wait. When's the, what's the release date on that? Uh, 2025. Oh, I can't. Man, you're just going like, you're putting a lot of work into this. Yeah. It's my magnum opus. Magnum opus. So long, hunters. We got a new game in town. <laughs> well, I guess it's the point where I should just turn you two loose. Uh, and, let you, and let you go. Oh, you're, you, um, you sound so resigned. I mean, I don't have a segment this episode, okay? So it's fine. Oh, Wait, so you have fine. nothing? I have, in a month? Do you want me to spend... Time talking about the three weeks I spent trying to get my depression or my my my, my anxiety uh, in order, or do you oh, and do I'm you want to hear me talk about an RPG that left left almost no impression on me? Then there you go. Yeah, that would I, be my I, whole segment. I thought you were going to talk about that one, but I guess if you really felt nothing, I got nothing. So I'm oh, just so I'm just gonna let y'all do what you want to do uh, oh. this time around. So uh, whoever wants to go can just go. <laughs> All right, I, I've got I've got a good one. Rhett. Okay. I, I can bring some bring some positive energy here. Um, I, I so <laughs> again, I made I went on a quest. I wanted to watch every anime movie on my letterbox watch list. Mm -hmm. I thought that if I made it into a quest, then you know you felt you've experienced this, Rhett, where it's like if you just watch a movie, then all you've done is watch a movie. You haven't like. Uh -oh accomplished a multi-week project like when you play a big rpg or something like that mm -hmm. and it's, it can be it can it can lack in satisfaction i think uh -huh. um so so instead my brain was like what if i make watching movies into the project and i just made a list in letterbox of like seven anime movies i was like i'm mm -hmm. gonna watch all of these over the next week and it worked it just it completely turned my brain into huh. JRPG obsession mode. And I was able to just watch like five movies in two days, which I never haven't done in years. <laughs> um, and it was very, very satisfying. And I just wrapped up the quest literally 15 minutes before we started recording the quest, the quest. Um, it included both the movies I had on when I started it and the movies that I added to it as I went in the middle. Yes, because I was like, well, now I want to watch this movie by the same person. So to in total, it was 10 movies. Oh my I will God. skip over a few, but um, the first one was Project Echo. I believe Polly has seen that one. I know. Oh, I, I, know that the, movie. I know that movie. <laughs> yeah, I got the. I ordered the remaster after Polly talked about it on the last thing. Um, this was actually one of the movies that got recommended to me by like my cousin in like probably like 2006 or something when mm. i mentioned i was trying to get into getting into anime it, he was he's the one that pointed me at like it was probably like 2006 2008 um he pointed me at project echo and then a bunch of shows i did watch like paranoia agent higurashi um a, a lot of things that i wound up mm. really liking and caring about i think last exile um and then several things i never quite got around to like project echo um Utawar Runamo. It was an it was actually a pretty interesting list to give to, like huh. a baby anime watcher in retrospect, but it worked out. Um Paul, Paul, this movie is just like extremely fucking fun to watch. It's it, it it's such a brilliant it's such a brilliant piece of work because I don't know how you can have an 80-minute <laughs> piece that has the kind of energy that that movie has and is able to maintain it through that 80 minutes without ever feeling like it's overstaying its welcome or it's running out of ideas. Absolutely. Um, like I if, you, this one with this. if you, if you watch something like Excel saga, I think that like, that's a 26 episode series, obviously, but I think that by like episode 18, I'm kind of over it. Mm -hmm. So like, this is much better at, at, at kind of maintaining that sort of short burst of energy. Whereas something like, Trying to keep that going long form, it's not easy. It's not gonna not everybody's gonna be able to feel like they're still on board after that long. Yeah, I think the pacing of this one really worked for me. Um uh, I watched this one with Cecile and the it it felt like we both had the same reaction, it was like that felt like an extremely high effort shit post. Yep. 
which I think is sort of on record as like something that we all really, really appreciate. Yeah, I, I mean, that's kind of like elaborate shit posting is kind of our brand, I think. Yeah. So <laughs> that movie is literally like the in company, like it, it encompasses a lot of the same energy that we have. And it, it's safe to say that movie heavily influenced the way that I approach a lot of humor. It was extremely like a keystone moment. Like, ah, that's where a lot of that comes from. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like the, the extremely loved on detailed space, <laughs> ba- spaceship fight sequences. Yeah. Yeah. And then cutting from that to, to Aiko running through the street with toast in her mouth. Running through the street with toast in her mouth, throwing tanks through buildings. Just really. Dra- dragging Biko behind her. Yeah. Seiko. Yeah. It's, it, it it's Seiko. Yeah. Yeah. With Seiko. I, I am wondering when running with toast in mouth was considered like. A parody. Yeah. Or yeah. It like when did like that could have been this one? Yeah. Like, I mean, it feels, been a parody, I mean, it feels like it may be played as a joke because like, I think that every yes. scene of this movie is literally a joke. Yeah. Uh, it's a joke or a reference to something. And the best part of the references is you don't need to get the references for the jokes to be funny because they wrote funny jokes around the references. So you can go, oh. you laugh, ha ha, it's funny, but it's also this weird, obscure Gundam reference that super nerds would get. So that extra yeah. little layer is there, but that Gundam layer is not what you're coming to the mo- like that joke for. Yeah. Nice. I, yeah, I, I did I watch a movie last night where a lot of the humor was just, hey, reference, and you laugh, but there's not really much of a joke. Kind of like yeah, that time really you rough. watched an anime. <laughs> 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 that was really good, Peter. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> um, I think one of the jokes that landed the best for me is when they first show up to school at their new school, and then Seiko is just unbelievably irritating for, to everybody. <laughs> And you don't really know the language or reality of the show yet. So you're kind of, I was kind of anxious, like, whoa, she, she's going to get people on her bad, on the backside. She's going to get bullied. No, everybody um, loves her. And then it like cuts to Biko, like in her bath being <laughs> waited upon, like, oh, Seiko, my one love. Oh I must have her. God, it's so <laughs> goddamn nuts. <laughs> when she's just this just little gremlin. Just this little like gremlin and yelling like, class. Biko is this complete like high society b- snod, b- you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real good. Yeah. So uh, the setting up all that stuff with Seiko and then a me and then having it go into Biko like I must have her, <laughs> and then that being like the driving thrust of a lot of the story That's was extremely mostly funny to me. the whole thing. Yeah. Yep. It's like a gradual series of escalating things where Biko keeps coming up with bigger and bigger, more ridiculous mechs to try to fight Aiko <laughs> with. And if I win in this duel, then Seiko is mine. And Aiko's like, what are you talking what about? What the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's real good energy. It's real good. It's very good. Uh, and then the climax is fucking nuts. Oh God. Um, yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. So I, I really enjoyed this one. And I get, and again, I felt a lot of, fucking Mike man, poly dungeon energy. <laughs> uh, and it brought me, so that was, that was fucking great. And then I, th- I watched Echo before really starting the quest, the, the quest, the quest. Um, and, and I think what that set me on was I want to watch a bunch of eighties and nineties Ovas. Ooh. Um, so I watched kite and Mezzoforte, which oh, I both yeah. had on the mm. list for a long time. Yeah. Um, Mezzoforte was also one of the ones that the cousin recommended mm. to me when I was like 14 or something, which is funny. Is there porn in that one? Um, there can be. Yeah, the version of Kite I have has the porn t- taken out. Oh, okay. Yeah. The versions, the versions of I watched had the porn in both of them. Uh, yeah. but it's very, it's very ancillary. Um, Kite is like a r- revenge movie where with mm-hmm. like some action scenes with a very cool assassin girl who has bullets that explode in people and it's just very very violent yeah yeah um, that was kind of the thrust of a lot of 80s uh, uh-huh. and early 90s ovas is oh look at this it's mad bull 2020 or something is just like jesus <clears throat> fucking christ um the i think the allure is like it's extremely the the action scenes are like really really loved on mm-hmm. and yeah. 
often they'll have like really nice jazz playing over them the whole time. It's it's such a it's such a good vibe, I think, for just like good, crunchy 90s over blood and guts. Yeah. Bullets vi- bloodily pe- penetrating to people's skulls and then exploding <laughs> and their bodies flying everywhere. Um, it's extremely fucking exploitative and gross. Like keep that. Keep, that's definitely one to keep in mind with this one. Um, it, it's also, it was also for me kind of gross in a way that like, there's just a bunch of rape in it too. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, it was in kind of like a dreary way where it kind of wore me down. And then like the most fun I had in the movie was the extremely silly action scene where she like falls out of a building, falls like 30 stories. Yeah. Lands on top of a of a bad guy, so she's fine because she landed on top of him. But they land on a car, and the impact sends the car through the bridge it was on top of, and then it lands on another car, and then those collapse into the subway beneath it. The animation it's, for the action scenes is really nuts. It's yeah, yeah. more yeah. what it is. Yeah. Um. So that was like the most fun part, and then the rest of the movie was like pretty dour. Mm. Yeah. Um. The, the, I was ending like, is, the ending is just pretty hopeless. It's so bleak. Um, and then I went to Mezzoforte. I was literally like, I don't know, do I want to watch more? And I was like, fuck it, it's it's just let's just do it. And then Mezzoforte is just like very, very funny. Huh. And it's it's like kind of exactly what I wanted because it leans a lot more into the silly action, but it's still like bloody and crunchy. Mm-hmm. Um but then the the story is a lot more lightweight and jokey and i and i really enjoyed that about it i i, I really like mezzo Ford. i recommend that one pretty straightforwardly cool it's um, funny because last year i watched kite and then i watched kite liberator the sequel mm-hmm. which is not good liberator is oh, fuck it liberator is miserable i expected Ugh. it to be the better of the two and then it 100 wasn't and it, it is also a big tonal shift but like in a in a really stupid way where it opens on a space station and there's an alien outbreak. What? Imagine it's following really... Kite up with that. It's, it's so... so fucking strange. Yeah. That's really it's, weird. It's really like not related at all, like story wise. Oh, but bizarre. Like, there's and there's no porn. There's but there's also no crunchy action. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank it's, you. It, it, so when you were start talking about Mezzo Forte, I'm like, what, what the hell is that? That that's not the sequel. And then it's like, oh, it, it kind of is. It kind of it the tone like the the animation style is very similar and it's yeah. the same director and huh. but again the tone's different in a way that I quite liked. Um, cool. So that was kind of exactly what I would have wanted out of like a ninety like a weird nineties OVA was Mezzo Forte. I had a good mm-hmm. time with that. Um, I still I still liked Kite a lot, but there's just a lot more qualifiers. And again, like I said, it's very bleak. Yeah. Um, uh, I watched Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust, which Polly sent me the DVD of probably 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I think that was 2000. No, it was way, it was probably 12 years ago. Yeah, that was a while. Is there a fucking parade outside? What I the think hell? It's what it sounds like. I have no idea what that is. All right. Well, that's some background noise here. Um, <laughs> some so I watched, there you go. I watched Vampire Hunter D at a friend's place like two years ago, I think. And I didn't really like it. It's pretty Um, dry and like, I get it, but it was just like, I liked it because I was the cool kid that had the VHS, (laughs) right? Nice. Like, and that movie was out of print for a really long time. So I was Mm -hmm. the cool kid. Mm -hmm. I was the cool teenager that somehow had this relic from 1985. Oh man. Um, Excellent. I think that's one of the movies in my DVD binder that I haven't gotten to yet. And probably, might not ever. You're not missing anything. Yeah, sounds right. Um, so I, I just never got around to Bloodlust. Um, and then I heard like I, I heard like somebody come away. I, I watched somebody watch both D and Bloodlust and then come away feeling better about Bloodlust. And I was mm-hmm. like, all right, well, let's give it a shot. Um, and I actually really liked I really like this one a lot. Um, I it's got a very nice kind of story thrust to it where you're bas- where it's basically this one vampire and the lady that, who's in love with him getting chased down by D and then another rival set of bounty hunters. So it's just like a bunch of these, all, all the bounty hunters have cool powers. All the 
bodyguards for the vampire have cool powers. D has cool powers. It's just like this excuse to have this prolonged chase across the countryside where there's just constant neat boss fights happening. Yeah, it's, it's just a video game movie, really. <laughs> yeah. And then the and then the climax is really neat. Like I I I I felt this one gave me kind of what what I want. I think I I I don't really remember anything from Vampire Hunter D, even though I saw it fairly recently. Um, but this one, there's just a ton of cool action stuff. It makes me maybe maybe think of Ninja Scroll a little bit, where I watched that one ages ago and yeah. I still remember individual beats really clearly. Um, and it's just gorgeous. It's so like gothic and just it's very slick blacks. looking. Like everything yeah. about the way that that movie is animated is very slick. Mm-hmm. Especially comparing with the '80s one, which is mm, pretty budgety. I it's think it's budgety. It's very dour. It's just kind of very dark all the time. Mm-hmm. Um. So that was early in the week, and then five more movies in the last two days. <laughs> let's just let's just chew through. I watched Five Star Stories, which was recommended to me from a friend because it significantly inspired Xeno Gears. Um, the manga at least. So this is like an old neck, old neck of shit, basically. Um, what I didn't know going into this was that this was a movie adapting the first arc of a 20 plus volume manga that is still going to this day. Oh Jesus. So I kind of watched it like expecting a movie movie. And then it was, mm -hmm. it feels like Xeno gears in the sense that they were getting, they were trying to squeeze like 12 episodes of story into 60 minutes and then even on top of that, it was the first arc of some much larger thing. Um, I think I thought the ending was really cool. And there were some neat things going on at the end there. I'm glad I watched it. Um, and, and there is just a lot of stuff in here that did feel like Xenogears. Like there's a prince of a desert kingdom who is in disguise as like a regular soldier or pirate guy. I was like, oh, I know that. Um, and... Let's do one more, and then and then I'll I'll throw it to Rhett because okay. um, I only have one little game to talk about, and then just a couple more anime things. Um, I watched Horus Prince of the Sun, so this was also a recommendation from a friend that I just wrote down a year ago. So I have like several friends who I, I like a lot who have given me movie recs, and because I never watch movies, I just haven't got to them. So part of the goal was like let's knock out several of those as well. Um. And this is a Takahata movie, and Isao Takahata, it's kind of proto-Ghibli. And I think it's the first Takahata movie I straightforwardly really liked. Because um, I watched Grave of the Fireflies, and I watched um, uh, Princess Kaguya a while ago. And it's very possible I just wasn't ready for them, but I just didn't really have a reaction to them. Um, and then this one just, it's, it's a 60s animated movie. Blasphemous and, to say that you didn't cry your eyes out at Grave of the Fireflies. Oh no! Sorry. sorry. Um, I know. Literally, I think, everybody will jump down your throat if that if you don't say that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying. Like, I'm not saying there's anything oh, wrong if you do. I'm not saying there's anything wrong if you don't. I just know that I've had people come at me that I yeah. was just like, yeah, look, I get it. I just didn't connect with it. <gasps> What are you, some kind of awful fucking anime fan? What are you? You don't really like anime at all if you didn't cry to Grave of the Fireflies. There isn't a person on the planet that wouldn't cry watching Grave of the Fireflies. The saddest thing ever, Polly. It is. Nothing's ever been sadder. Nothing at all on the planet. Not even the events that inspired it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I really don't like anime fans a lot of the time. Oh no, the fans suck. I think that's fair. So that was, but but this one, I so like with the other ones, I was I just was like, this is, this is like classy smart people anime. This isn't really for me. <laughs> um, and then this one is just a very different energy where it's. A, it's sixties and sixties anime just feels so different. Yeah, like it, I watched me, no, I watched nobody's boy Remy. 
like eight uh-huh. or so years ago, and that was such a wildly different thing. Uh, and I thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, like that was kind of like my. That's probably the oldest anime I've ever watched. Is Nobody's Boy Remy, uh, and it was really the good. Anime wasn't anime yet. I mean, I mean, yeah, it feels. It reminds me more of like old Disney stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it, it made me think of like Sleeping Beauty, yeah. which wasn't. What was um, this one called again? I'm sorry. Uh, Horus, Prince of the Sun. Oh, right, right. Thank you. Um, so this starts off just like kind of an adventure movie. A guy literally pulls a sword. A kid literally pulls a sword from a stone guy, a stone giant stone golem, um, and then is proclaimed a destined hero if he can reforge the sword. Um, and there's an evil king who's trying to just kill people because he's such a shithead. He just wants to eradicate humanity because he hates them because uh, he's awful. And then they, like he goes so. Horus goes to a village and there's a, f- a giant demon fish that is devouring all of their fish and they're starving to death. And this fish was sent by the evil devil and he fights the fish and kills it. And I'm just like watching this, like, Oh, this is just a fun, fun adventure. Um, and then they introduce, um, Hilda as just like, Oh, she's lonely and sings. And then she wants to join the village. And I'm like, this is nice. And then it's revealed that she's actually the demon King's sister. Nice. And working for him secretly in, deci- dis- in disguise. And she's conflicted about it. And that's what the movie's actually about. It's about the the sister of this evil devil mm. king. Um, and whether or not she can be redeemed or not. And it actually completely fucking rules. It's actually awesome. <laughs> it's very good. Um, and I, so I, re- I was really surprised. Like, I... The, the first like half hour was like, yes, this is exactly what I was expecting here. I want I want just a cool classic adventure movie thing. Um, and then they wound up actually pulling me in emotionally in a way that a lot of those OVAs weren't really doing. Yeah. Um, so I was really, really pleased. So anime is fucking good. Even anime movies, when they, <laughs> even though they're much shorter. So you uh, pointed this out on Twitter, but mm-hmm. the My Anime List scores for the, everything you've talked about... <laughs> Oofa like, doofa. Pretty dire. Like all on the sixes. Yeah. Except Literally for- every single one. Project Echo, Kite, Mezzoforte. Yeah. Five I, looked, stories, I was looking stories. them up while you were talking. Um, <laughs> except for Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust, which has like a pretty decent score. Project Echo, 6.85. Mezzoforte. A great of it's all time. Crazy. Project Echo is a great of all time. That's just like, like, like that. That site is literally dominated by Zoomers, though. So it's just like that's yeah, still absolutely. like all you're gonna. These are children. All you're gonna find is literally fucking Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and that kind of garbage. As like idiot you know, children, whose idiot opinions children can be dismissed. who shouldn't be allowed to have opinions with regards to literally anything. <laughs> if we're being honest, I started absolutely. on the high end. Mezzo Forte six point six three. Five Star Stories, 6.59. Kite, 6.55. And then Horace, which is probably John's favorite, 6.5. The lowest score. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I, like, I can I can see Donkey on Kite. I can see Donkey on Five yeah, Star Stories. Kite. <laughs> um, Mezzoforte I thought was really fun. Um, but Project Aiko and Horace are just like straightforwardly fucking great. Like, I, that's just nuts to me. It's just people who can't watch old movies because they're children. Uh, I watched old movies when I was a kid. Maybe, I don't know. Kids these days. They think the Star Wars are better in the 2000s than the 70s. Oh my God. The, did you, the fucking prequel nostalgia. It's killing me. It's, it's dire. Like, we're like, we're at that point now, like, where everything that was ever called bad rightly by the way anything that was rightly called bad now Mm -hmm. suddenly gets a redemption arc Mm -hmm. and somebody needs to make that like their crusade because that makes them special on the internet (laughs) because they like a bad movie or it's just like stuff from the early 2000s that they saw as kids is nostalgic now and we're old yeah and they and we've seen you know, like 15 things total and you see that people on the internet disagree on what you like and it's like, all right, time to have a crusade. Because I did that. Like you you all saw me do that yeah. over and over because <laughs> you knew me when I was like 17 years old and I'd played five RPGs 
And I was like, oh, this one's, I don't understand why people don't like this one. It's so great. I have such a wide frame of reference. <laughs> but one of those five was Chrono Trigger, so. That's true. The first, it's wild that the first two RPGs I played, um, Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy IV, just happened to be the best ones. Yeah. Yeah. Like, same like, here. Pretty much same here, honestly. <laughs> I, pl- I actually I played Fantasy Star 2 and was like, no, 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 something's off here. And then I played fan- Final Fantasy 2. I was like, yep, yeah, best ever. There you go. There you go. Um, OK, so anime movies are a delight. Life is good. I skipped over Sword Art Online Extra Edition, which is. Oh, my a, Christ. Which is a. Oh, oh this is going to feel so good to say. It is a recap of the first season <laughs> movie mixed with a filler beach episode. <laughs> Oh my God, the thumbnail for this on Mal. Yep. Um, uh, 6.55, still in the sixes here. <laughs> but That's this a one, recent one too. Everything else has like 3,000 votes. This has 177,000. How did so many people watch this? It's it's like this it's fucking stored out online. It's literally a recap movie slash beach episode filler. It's it's such trash. And watching it with somebody else that also <gasps> cherishes and adores Sao is extremely sweet and romantic and a cherished cinematic memory. Now, oh my god. <laughs> um. So all right. So Rhett, what have you? Been oh watching, boy, Brendo. This episode, I didn't realize this is how this episode was going to go. I'm sorry, Polly. Because <laughs> I've watched nothing but anime. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I I finished up uh, Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative. Had pretty much the same feelings as Polly mm-hmm. on it. Where it was kind of let down by the ending. It, it kind of soured like the day or two afterwards. Where it's like, oh. man, something just didn't click with this one. It was a good game, but... Um, and then I was just, okay, I've got like a full month till Xenoblade 3 comes out. Time for some anime. And you elected not, and like, like me, you elected not to start a new RPG. No RPGs, no games at all, basically. (laughs) Rhett, it's so wild how much stuff you can do and watch and see if you're not playing a 40 hour RPG. It makes such a difference, huh? Xenoblade 3 has come out now and I'm just like scared <laughs> like it's such an investment yep yep because during the time i watched i i haven't finished all of these i have two shows with two episodes left mm-hmm. i basically though completed 11 series <laughs> are they all around 12 episodes um 12 10 22 12 12 12 6 12 25 22 11 that's where i'm at <sighs> that's so much fucking anime red I just said this is this is just what I do now. This is what I do now, and that's yeah. It's it's literally just like approaching a different medium with like the same dedication that a, yeah. that a fucking RPG demands of you. Yeah, I started to get a little bit exhausted by the end, where it's like okay, mostly because because of the shows I'm watching right now. But it's like okay, maybe I'm ready for Xenoblade, and then and then I just was like, actually, I'm going to watch Better Call Saul. But I also watched season five of that. There you go. I mean, that's, I really, still, that's still giving you a little bit of a palate cleanser from all the anime. Yeah, it was definitely a palate cleanser. The whiplash of going from anime, 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 anime to live action show. And I don't watch live action stuff like ever. Yeah, like I, I, told this to a friend, I told this to a friend where I, like my mom kept recommending me shows and it was really sweet. But I eventually just had to say like, Mom, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't watch live action television pretty much ever. Yeah, specifically, I'll watch movies because they are short and like the Marvel mm-hmm. stuff, even though I kind of fell off those as well. But like the show I watched before, uh, yeah, there was Better Call Saul. And before that was Squid Game. And before that was Breaking Bad. And before that was Lost. Like there's like the last two decades of live action TV that I've watched. <laughs> Fucking nuts. And the first two of those were because Polly recommended them. Lost mm-hmm. and Breaking Bad was like. And then Breaking Bad, I didn't get on until season five, like when it was right about to end and just binge that. Um, so anime, it's time. It's time, Rhett. Jump in. I, I am not going to talk about all 11 shows that I watched. That would be insane. And I'm not even sure what I would say about them. But I'm going to talk about my three favorites and one other. And that one other is called The Executioner and Her Way of Life. Yeah. 
I thought this one was just funny enough to mention. How was uh, it, Rat? I so this is it has a very low score on my anime list, which obviously we now know means nothing because they yes. have bad taste. Of course. Because to me, the worst thing a show can be is like, OK, I guess this does kind of apply to old stuff when it's like slow and boring. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. poison to me. Yeah. But I think with anime as well, there's also just production values. Like I've seen some shows that just really feel handicapped by the budget and the direction. Mm-hmm. This isn't that. This is just a fun, good show. And it has a, you know, a, a score in the sixes. Um, it is an isekai, kind of. It's from it's the. Just, it's like a Yuri isekai, right? Shh, we're getting okay. that. Oh, okay. Okay, so the show start, starts out with a boy who is from Japan and he's oh. been summoned into another world. A magical concept we've never seen before. Mm-hmm. He's summoned by like the king in the castle and they look at him and they kick him out. They go, no, not you. And he's just thrown into the town and he's like, what, what, where the hell am I? Uh, and he meets this priestess girl. She show, so she takes pity on him, showing him around. And he's like, oh, I'm from another world. And she's like, oh, yeah, we've got lots of people from this place called Japan. They've got a whole like J- Japan quarter in town where they, <laughs> like these immigrants stay. Like this is an isekai where they're sick of people coming in from Japan because they have no idea what to do with them. Eleven so town. Some, oh God, yeah. Um, so at some point he reveals there's some. So, the, the, the technicalities of the show are weird, and, and this was the first show I watched of all 11, so it's faded from memory a bit. But mm-hmm. eventually, uh, he reveals that, oh, I've got a special power granted to me from the isekai process, because also, that's just how these shows work. Yep. So he's got the power of Void, and then she hears that and immediately stabs him in the neck, and he dies. <laughs> and he And he's dead. <laughs> and he does not come back. <laughs> do you think this is the do you think this is the six sixes on Mal? So people lost their mind at this one. <laughs> this really is why a lot of people don't like this show. I looked at the forum thread for episode one and people were mad. <laughs> and I'm like this. Now, I, did, I wasn't surprised because this is like the reason I watched this. I knew this was going to happen going in. Mm-hmm. And it's it's like 10 minutes into episode one. Like, come on. <laughs> But the forum thread was just this dumpster fire, like 10 pages long, people arguing about the magic system's rules. Like, oh, if his power was void, he should have been able to nullify the knife before it went into his head, even oh though she... Oh my god, people are so brain poisoned! I'm like, come people on, man. so isekai brain poisoned! It's so obviously not the story they were telling. It's episode one. The author makes the rules as they want. Oh my god. Get, uh, get so these people wild. a copy of God Ray Zero episode one. Let's see how they God, are. that's a that's a good twist there too. <laughs> and then and then they do it again. Yeah. <sighs> so yeah, it's like, well, the show just wasn't about this boy. And mm-hmm. So like they're just gonna write the story as they want. So, anyways, uh the priest girl is actually the executioner who is there to maintain stability of the world by murdering people who are isekai'd into it. And have powers that are too destabilizing to the world. Because all all problems in this world are caused caused by the isekai folk who have like these game breaking powers. Like there was a continent that turned into salt and sank into the ocean because of somebody. Uh, All monsters in the world are caused by this girl who can summon them. And they had to like seal her away permanently. And she's like immortal and still stuck in there. And monsters leak out once in a while. Like everything bad is coming from isekai these isekai people. people. That's so fucking choice. So the executioner goes on to her next target, which is a girl that was also summoned by the castle. She finds out her. Oh, wait. She doesn't find out the power immediately. She just stabs her in the neck. Hmm. And then I guess this may be why people got mad in episode one. The girl's power ends up being time reversal. (laughs) So she, after death, immediately reverses time and is fine. But she doesn't know that that happened. Oh, interesting. So she just wakes up like, oh, I guess I fell. Anyways, friend, let's keep going. (laughs) So now it's like this awkward buddy comedy between (laughs) the time girl 
and the executioner who really, really wants to fucking kill her, but can't. <laughs> and then things kind of go as, you know, light novel adaptations go. It has a big mm. explosive climax at episode six and then another one towards the end where it's very rigidly like the first six episodes are this volume and the next six episodes are this volume. Like it's, it is two story arcs yeah. and both of them tease something that's going to happen in the future that we <laughs> don't like, get to. Yeah. Like six, episode six ends with a tease of something in the future. And then episode 12 ends with the same tease. And I'm just like, okay, maybe this should have been 24 episodes. Maybe you'd get there eventually. I, I do feel a bit of like, I see through these shows now because I've watched so many similar things where it's like, mm -hmm. it's episode 10 and they're fighting the final boss. And I'm like, hmm. yeah, but there's two episodes less left. How many forms you got? And of course they had like two more forms where it's like, oh, you killed me, but oh no, there was a demon inside me. Blarg, and it explodes and the demon comes out and then they kill that. And then, oh, the demon had a second form. Oh no. <laughs> It's fun, dumb action stuff, really. Good. Also, also, it's very, very Yuri tinged. Like Good. the time, time girl is totally in love with the executioner. Good. I think this is why I had I had the light novel on my list for a while. It's so silly because then they'll give monologues like, "Someday I'm going to kill you," and then the other girl's like, "Someday you're the only one I'll let kill me." <laughs> It's so, <laughs> I like stupid and this show is stupid. Good. Um, so now on to the first of the top three shows that I watched. Um, I watched a show called Healer Girl. I don't know nothing this, about this one. This is the musical. Oh, oh, yeah. This is, so this is an anime original. This is where we're at with uh, original ideas. Because last time we had a, uh, Oh, the, the guy from ancient China who got summoned into the modern world to become an idol producer. This one is girls who sing to heal people, literally. They are healers through their songs. They work in medical the medical profession and they go to hospitals and they sing for people and it heals their wounds. Right, if, you like, if, they, if you like shows about girls that fight and sing, you should probably watch Simone. Oh, interesting. That's an older like show, but that is a show yeah. that, that is a show that I have on DVD and have literally never watched, but I know that that's the premise. <laughs> I like that it literally started with Sim. Sim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. So that was the joke you were making? Simone Fogier. Um, Healer Girl is just this very cute, funny comedy thing, and it's basically musical. Mm -hmm. It's... Like, it's weird because not every episode, they don't follow the same template every episode, which I thought was good. Because at first I thought, oh, every episode is going to end with somebody getting injured and then they're going to sing and that's going to be the episode. Because mm -hmm. that's kind of what the first two are. And then episode three is just like, hey, they're going to sing like four times in the episode. Like, it's just it's just a musical at this point where they're like in a road race, like a track race, singing during it, like just full on musical, like emoting their character development and stuff. It's it's hard to talk about. It's such so a cute. fun show. It's so cute. It's also like Buck Wild, where there's a few scenes where they have to observe like major surgery because like actual doctors do still exist. Like they like in episode one, a kid like skins his knee and she sings and he physically heals him. But they can't do like surgery, <laughs> but they can help the doctors out anyways. There's oh, like a scene so cool. where they're in an operating room observing like a a 10 hour procedure singing the entire time and then something goes wrong and oh no the tumor was bigger than expected the patient is lo is losing blood and their reaction is to just start singing louder <laughs> we've got to give all our energy to the doctor and the patient <laughs> it's just it's such a weird thing. That's actually great. That's actually a, a really nice way of taking the premise and then pushing it, I think. They push it in weird directions like that. And then one of the girls goes to America in the last episode and works in the hospital there. And she doesn't speak the language, but she can sing. And even though it's it's so weird. Because <laughs> there's a, I don't know. Again, a wild premise. I've watched a lot of shows and this is a, this is a wild one. I, I do wish it had maybe a few more like full on musical episodes. There's only like three episodes where 
they sing like four times in an episode. Mm-hmm. It's a very nice show. It kind of reminded me of Love Live just because of like the comedic timing and it's very fast moving. Because cool. when I was watching this, which is like an anime original 12 episodes versus a 22 episode show that just felt like, oh, the dialogue in Healer Girl just moves like literally twice as fast <laughs> versus the show where it's very talking heads and they're not in as, in as much as a rush to get the plot going. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember. I remember going from certain like light novel adaptations to yeah other anime and just being like, "Whoa, yeah, I forgot what it's like to have energy in television." Yeah, the show is just it's such pure, happy energy. I really liked it. That's really nice. So uh, the, the, the subtitle is "Kind-hearted, powerful songs heal the world." These are beautiful miracles sung by humanity. <laughs> Healer girl. Wow. Yeah. Good. The last, okay, I will talk, the ending made me cry a ton because it's the most basic thing you can do. They play the opening at the end of the show, Mm -hmm. but then after like the minute and a half point, it keeps going to the the full length, like the full length five five minute version. And all of that is like sung in universe. Oh. All the characters just like continuing the song in as they're doing stuff in the show. And then I think, and then I think they just start flying because it, they make an illusion at the end, like they talk about magic and it's like, wink, wink, this is a magical girl show. It's just not without fighting. Oh, <laughs> that rules. So that was, a, that was a very good time. Cool. So I'm not sure what to do now if Polly do- truly doesn't have a segment. I, I really don't. <laughs> okay. Do we, do we throw back to John? I mean, y'all can do whatever you want. I'm not for it. <laughs> I'm not for it. Um, I don't need a five minute break. That's that's the that's the question here. All yeah, right, let's, ha- yeah, let's take a break. All right, we can take we can take a short break. I'll okay. be right back. All right, see y'all shortly.
Bit. What? 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 I DM'd you something interesting on Twitter. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's funny. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It looks like those fruit jellies. <laughs> it's pretty silly. Yeah, that's not the idea I had in mind. No, I know the line. The idea was just the line going straight over it. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, this is literally we've taken a nipple. And we've turned it into a, a jelly bean, a blueberry jelly bean. It's, it's a, not perfect, but at least someone is thinking that someone else like, had the idea of, uh, hey, these lines go pretty close to her nips. Yeah, like these lines on this character, they glow and they look like they might run over her nipples. But since this is not a hentai game. We will never we'll actually know canonically unless we ask the director at an anime convention or, or the character designer at an anime convention, hey, does this character in your video game have glow nips? Do the nipples match the lines? Do the nipples match the lines? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting that they chose a line down there, too. Interesting. Not where I would have seen one because it doesn't really suit, you know. Oh, where the other lines are. <laughs> yeah, it's I just, just kind of that. weird and randomly unconnected there. It's not where I. it just kind of looks like she was brushing her teeth. While naked for some reason. And got some toothpaste that just dripped down there and she forgot about it. Oh, I think it's funnier to just leave this in with no context. Because somebody might put it together. It's like, what are you talking about? What? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> We're talking about I'm nipples. On the, We're talking I'm about nipples DM. that might glow. <sighs> Listen in on this DM. Yeah, there, there's, there's. I'm nipples. as lost as I'm as lost as y'all chat. It's okay. It's okay. Somebody oh. out there will figure it out. They'll be like, "Hey, I hadn't had that intrusive thought either, but now I am. Now I'm thinking <laughs> about it. Now I'm looking at the lines, seeing where they go. I'm thinking." Are they glow nips? If he says Red is looking at glowy nips while podcasting, not for the first time. Probably not for not. the first time, I would imagine. He's probably seen some other glowy nips. I have to imagine. There's a lot of yeah. art out there online, and we see there, a lot of it. There's a lot of art online. There a is a lot of it. A lot of it, just, a, a lot of it with breasts. Up. A lot of it. On ironically, I just get up and check Danborough and go, Jesus Christ! There's like a hundred new things yeah. <laughs> every morning. The demi fiend is that that is a good guess, but it is not because we someone, can. Someone did do a demi fiend crossover. Somebody with did do a demi fiend crossover of this character though, and it worked pretty good. So, that's uh, that's your weird, out of context <laughs> yeah. moment. There you go. We need those. You'll enjoy that. You'll enjoy. It. Somebody will get that. Somebody, like I said, that's going to infect somebody's brain, and then they're going to go looking for pictures too. Absolutely. They're going to go and they're going to be like, I wonder where the glow nips are. Who's got the glow nips? Who's got the jelly bean glow nips? DLC. DL That'd be a great DLC. Imagine if you could like, if they actually put like real time lighting on the environment from them. Imagine that kind of effort. Like that's the kind of effort I want to see. Real time lighting. You know, yep. I didn't, I didn't believe emulating was the way to play this game until the mods came out. And Jesus. Mm. It's Xenoblade. It's Xenoblade, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. That was the key. That was my way in. Yeah, we're call except this time around. Oh, I bet it's I bet it's the midriff girl that are that you like because she has the lines on her. It's Cenoblade. Oh, nice. Uh, Xenoblade. How did we not think of that? Like in the, you know, the maybe in the six Google months that we have been lusting for this character, how did we not once think to call it Cenoblade? So much lust on thy feed and in my heart. And it works because she's amazing. Yeah. Good. You know it's great to hear. I, I googled Senna Space Blade, and the number one result for images is the SMT crossover well, one. There you go! And number two is her actual official art. Well, there you go. Like, yeah, so Senna Blade, you can, you can go look, go Google that, and you'll find, oh the, my God. you'll find the Demi Fiend. You'll find the Demi Fiend version. It's really good. 
It's taste puller. Cinema blade. Boop. Boop. <laughs> Got it. Did you see it, John? Good job. <laughs> So this is the best part of the podcast. This is the best part Absolutely. of this episode. Yeah, yeah. I, honestly, I think it is. Not to sell ourselves short talking <laughs> about anime. Fuck. Well, I didn't see that. I didn't see the the correct one. Fuck, there's our chat. There it is. This is what I saw. Uh oh. And then I also saw. Oh, okay. The Senna Blade. Ah, yes. The Senna Blade. <laughs> Stupid. That's pretty good. That's pretty stupid. That's that's high quality shit posting that the that listeners of the podcast cannot see. So that's fine. That's when, fine. when is when has an image being a major part of the component of the humor ever stopped major podcasts from including that as a segment? Right. Exactly. Like that. That would be absolutely stupid if anybody ever did. It's so ridiculous. Ridiculous. Anyways, guys, it's time to show off the new fan art. Yeah. Let's get on that this is the fan art corner where we're going to review the best new fan art that is coming out for xenoblade chronicles 3 uh, so i'm going to head on over to dan buru now and we're going to have a look at the top 100 new entries and uh, we will describe them to you in vivid detail no matter how graphic or illegal i did <laughs> i did play a video game oh i did play one video game before we you gotta do the podcast close now, out Rhett. the anime yep okay. try Rhett. So episode um, is tainted. You had a chance. This was going to be the one, and now it's tainted because John has to have a, by video games. John has to have a dumb fucking stupid video game in it. I know. I think I finished Fantasy Star Four like right after the last one, but I think oh. I got across most of my feelings. That oh it was yeah, yeah. Really fucking good. It's really good. I really liked it a lot. It made me happy and made me happy that I play video games and play RPGs. Um, and then I immediately went off of Fantasy Star Four and started Final Fantasy Two for some reason. Um, I had the Pixel Remaster. I played the Pixel Remaster 3 earlier in the year. I immediately followed that with Final Fantasy 9, also on my phone. I had three Final Fantasies that I hadn't played, and they were all on my phone now. So I played Final Fantasy 2 on my phone. And it's not secretly really good. Which was yeah, I see. Like, I just never oh. got Yeah, like I thought that that was the one. Was like, I always see people saying that. They're just like, yeah, but, no, this is the really good one that nobody played. Now I'm special. I like it. <laughs> I, I'm going to turn this around, though. Did you like it more than nine? Absolutely. Easily. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah. A, that's a real fucking hard bar to clear. I think. <laughs> actually, maybe not. I think it's worse to have high expectations and then be disappointed than have low expectations and have it kind of meet it. Honestly, I had low expectations and it exceeded them. I, yeah, I nice even better. There. Yeah. Like, like the final dungeon is honestly pretty epic. It, it feels like the first like Final Fantasy dungeon, Final Fantasy dun dungeon in a cool way. Mm -hmm. um, they play like a big dramatic song. It, like I got Falcom tingles playing through it. Um, honestly, like all about how the story plays out and how even how it's paced, I was pretty much content with. I, I pretty much liked, which I didn't expect. I expected the pacing to really annoy me because that's how I remembered it um playing it like six years ago i played like half of it um and i just remember it being like oh you just do fetch quests just do fetch quests that's it um but like that is what you do but the way it's delivered by the story it feels like you are part of some kind of larger kind of guerrilla war effort in a cool way because you'll be like out on a mission and then there'll be other npcs out doing other missions and then they'll intersect and pay back, back in cool ways and you're not like guiding the experience you're just being told where to go and then you go do a thing get a doodad come back but the way it worked in the story felt kind of right to me it felt like this is an evil empire rebellion story where it, you're really in the trenches fighting the evil empire for the whole game and that's neat because like a lot of final fantasy is like evil empire game for six hours and then yeah you go fight sephiroth for the rest of it or <laughs> Or, oh, it's time to fight Golbez now. Oh, it's, oh, now Kefka destroyed the world. All right. Yeah. This is the original fighting an evil empire RPG. And it doesn't assume that you're going to buy into that. It's not assuming that you are like, yeah, it's fine. It's Star Wars. Let's do it. It kind of earns it. And every part of that, it, it it does a lot of cool stuff. Like with the, the towns getting destroyed, 
and then just being con for the rest of the game. Um, the way the NPC dialogue changes in the in the base between every mission. Um, there, there's a lot that I think there's a lot, and it, it it kind of divides into like three big arcs where you're chasing down the big juggernaut, you're chasing down the ultimate magic, and then you're then it's the near the end of the game. Um, it's just the character progression is just really not rewarding at all. Um, cause I so, remember, yeah, go for it. Is it, is it still messed up in pixel remaster? Cause the only thing I've ever known about this game is, Oh, you attack your party members to buff the stats. Like you can do that. You can do that in all of them. Okay. So um, they, they have not removed that. No, they're not, they're not going to, they did the, the dramatic change they made, I think in the GBA version, that's carried forward to all remakes mm-hmm. is, um, that you don't, your stats don't go down. So if you <gasps> fight a lot in the original game, then if you fight long enough, then your magic starts to go down and vice versa. Um, so you can actually like lose progress with your stats depending on how you <laughs> manipulate your characters. Um, and they just remove that in these ones. See, there's only forward progress. Okay. I, I minimally beat up my own characters. They they added there's plenty of HP boosts you get naturally, um, so that wasn't really a major component for me. Honestly, for me, the problem was that you get all the spells at level one, and they just feel kind of useless. Mm-hmm. Attacking things is much better. You get the blood sword, which is near the end of the game, which is extremely powerful and effortlessly dispatches everyone. You get the ultimate magic, and it sucks ass. <laughs> at le- and it's level one. Um, in the original, it was so busted that you can level it up to level 16 and it will still suck ass. <laughs> um, so do you have to grind the spells out to make them anything? You have to grind the spells out to make them anything. And then even when I did that, I was generally better off just attacking stuff. Uh, like the only time you want to use spells is when you fight in enemies that have such ridiculously high physical defense that you deal zero damage to them. So... It's just like attacking is always the right call until you run into an enemy where you literally cannot attack them and then you are you have to use magic and then it sucks. Even when you grind it a lot. Mm. Which isn't... I just don't think that's very fun. I don't think that's very tactical or rewarding. I don't feel like all, all the real progress I was feeling on my characters was just them getting higher HP and then dealing more physical damage with their basic attacks. And that's not very tuny. It's not <laughs> it like even at the end of Final Fantasy three, right after this one, I was like summoning dragons and using like dual wielding legendary blades and doing all this cool shit. And I felt pretty badass. Um, you have all these great magic spells. You have Kiraja. Um, of course, Final Fantasy four, five, six, seven, you feel like a fucking badass by the end of it. Um, this one you just don't have that. It's just so withholding. It doesn't. It feels like it. It it is extremely resistant to just giving you any kind of win. That way of just like now you get a cool new spell or weapon, um, and I, I I didn't like that. It just it just that uh, kind of. I I feel like the the shell of a really strong RPG is here, but the the core character progression just really. Yeah hampered it for me and made it not satisfying. Do you think it has anything to do with the story? Like, does it work in any way with the evil empire? Kind of, I don't know. I mean, that's the, that's evidence. the argument. That's the argument from, I have a couple of very smart friends, one very smart mm-hmm. friend who's playing it now. And it's that the story is supposed to be bleak and grinding as you, yeah. every victory you have against the evil empire is Pyrrhic and, compromised and like you succeed at one thing and then yeah. immediately things go bad. Um, I, I liked how they handled character death in this one. I think it's honestly a lot more smart and mature about it than even like three and four. Like they introduce a character at the start of the game and then he plays a role throughout the rest of the game and then he dies late near the end. It's like, Oh shit, good job. You did, you did the way you're supposed to do it. You didn't just introduce them and then immediately kill them off. Like everybody in three. Um, but, like, yeah, I, I can see where, like, your victories are Pyrrhic, nothing is easy, nothing comes to you easy, 
And like, I can see that read and that playing into the systems where you're just feeling like you're kind of clawing your way to victory against yeah. this hopeless force. Like it makes for a good story. It's maybe not a fun video game to play. Yeah. Like I, if you, if that's, if that's your read and if that makes it work for you, I think that is fucking awesome. I think that rules. I would rather have just played a fun RPG. Is kind of my, my takeaway here. Um, I played a couple games now where I'm just like, the th- this makes sense with the theming, but it's still not something I wanted to play for 30 hours or 20 hours or whatnot. Yeah. Um, so I, I th- again, I think that that's part of it for me with like, I still think this is, it, it introduces so much about Final Fantasy. It intro- There's so much of like four and three in here, four and five and six. There's so much of Final Fantasy six, like six's whole tone feels way more in line with two than it does with like three and four and five. Um, I think that's probably one of the coolest things about FF2, but to me, it was, it wasn't enough to kind of make the per- character progression choices satisfying. I think, I think it's weird because Final Fantasy Legend, I think is way cooler about it. Like you get some fucking awesome abilities in that one. And then it's still just scary because the enemies are really, really hard. Um, I also killed the final boss in like two hits in this one. I think. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Is you just get the blood sword and it's really good. And then in the NES version, you get two of them. <laughs> cool. Can you dual wield? Yes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, I don't know how it is in the NES, in the current version, because I killed them in like two hits. But in the NES version, the blood sword apparently just deals exactly one sixteenth of the max HP of any enemy, including what? bosses. Oh, fuck. So you can just kill it in eight turns. Kill anything in eight turns. So yeah, it's like the one thing you need magic for is the enemies that you can't kill with your attacks, and then you get a sword that kills anything with your attacks. <laughs> eight turns, enough time to kill anything that moves. Yeah, literally kill the devil. <laughs> um, so and you get and you get one of the blood swords just in a, a standard treasure chest in the nest version in a dungeon, very, very easily accessible like all right cool game cool progression i just i just don't think there's a redemptive reading of how the numbers in this game work that makes sense to me so i respect the friends that like it i think there's a lot of cool shit here and again outside of the character progression i think this is a good rpg just straightforwardly um but that 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 was enough to cripple it for me um and that completed my final fantasy journey because now i've played every mainline uh, pre-merger FF. Oh, I know. You right? Get me with that pre-merger. I'm like, you <laughs> ain't played 11 yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's play the MMO to really fuck you up. Yeah, I'll play all of Final Fantasy 14. I'll play all of Final Fantasy 11. Ugh. I um, wouldn't wish 14 on anybody. <laughs> um. That's mean. I so, wouldn't wish eleven on anybody. I think fourteen. I'm sadistic is and okay. still burnt by that one. That's why I, I will be mean enough to inflict four, 11 on people. Eleven. <laughs> I don't even know what it is anymore because I guess it's still running. But like, who is even still there? I know like people point, that were. I know people that were playing it pretty recently. That's crazy. So. But I do know at some point it got like they made the old stuff so easy that you can just solo it. So it's not the same thing as it was. No. <laughs> It's also been like 15 years, so of course. Yeah, it's not a hardcore good game anymore. Now it's a baby, baby MMO. I'm, you, you know, I, the original and it was so good, right? I'm willing to think, though, that I remember I was talking to Polly about this, how like mm-hmm. people act like World of Warcraft at, at launch was difficult when coming off Final Fantasy 11, World of Warcraft was baby easy mode. I bet nerfed final fantasy 14 is still like super hardcore compared to world of warcraft <laughs> god yeah my, i mean world of warcraft also got nerfed a lot so like i i'm sure that that's what i'm saying is like if 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 world of warcraft people are like oh this game used to be so much less baby easy than it was at launch and i'm just like oh my god i thought it was baby easy at launch what the fuck is it now god that's funny my MMO arc is I want to try, I want to run through like episode one of PSO at some point. That's like the extent of it. At the, doable. The extent of it for me. Doable. Do- yep. Yeah. Doable. It's like one, it's like a, I can, I can jump, I can do that for a couple weeks and have a good time. That sounds great. It would literally um, take you an afternoon. 
Yeah, if we do that private server with five times experience, we could do it in, in like a stream. <laughs> um, so I have a few more anime things. Yeah, um, now we're talking. That's the extent of it. Um, hey, Rhett, since yeah. the last podcast, I finished Sound Euphonium Season 1, Sound Euphonium Season 2, and Sound Euphonium the movie, Our Promise, colon, A Brand New Day. Yeah. You finished season one like right after the last podcast. Yep. I was like, fuck, it's not going to be fresh. And then all that happened. Oh, yeah. The rest of it is very fresh. Hey, Red Sound Volume's fucking great. It's amazing. It's it just amazing. <laughs> it was my number four of the decade for a fucking yeah. reason. I pushed it as high as I could. Yeah. It makes I mean, before it got to the top, the top unassailable top three we all had. Yeah. We're like both all of us had. Prom, um, we had Monica uh, and Shinsuke Yori. Yep. Um, but but yeah, like I, I think um, the tone that feels the closest to me is I started comparing it with like a place further than the universe. I think, mm -hmm. um, which is just not what I expected at all going in. I just didn't really. I don't know why. I just didn't really expect it to be like character. I mean, I did because of Liz and the Bluebird. But before mm -hmm. that, I think I just kind of had a much more like shapeless. It's it's a music show with cute girls. It's like Love Live or something. It, no, it's the antithesis of K-On. <laughs> it's the antithesis of K-On. It's, it's not, it's, it is, it like the first season I think is almost like a sports anime, just like straightforwardly. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Uh, where it's just like, we are getting better at, we. they start off so sad and unmotivated mm -hmm. and the teacher comes in and he's just absolutely searing at them. Just like, what? What is this? I thought I told you not to call, not to call me in until you were until you're ready to perform. What what is this? Um, like he makes people cry, um, but while being completely like gentle, smiley, mm -hmm. um, and then they all just get super fucking motivated, and then they get to the the big competition at the end, and they play, and you're just like rooting so hard for them. Um, I, I feel like season two kind of loses a little bit of the sports anime stuff because it feels a lot more like here are these arcs of character drama. Yeah. Like season two is straightforwardly like here is um, Mizure and Nozomi for yeah. several episodes. And then the whole back half is like, and now we're going to untangle Asuka. Oh, um, boy. <laughs> uh huh. That was probably my favorite chunk. Um, I, I felt like. Asuka and Kumiko were they're they're like distant, quiet. You don't really know what's going on in their heads. Mm -hmm. So like the back half of season two being and now we're going to dig in there and untangle all of it was extremely emotional and satisfying for me. Um, and of course, all the stuff with Reina in season one is really, really good. <laughs> Reina is still a threat. Reina is still a threat. <laughs> the way he you DM'd me like right when they kind of resolve the Asuka stuff. And then at the end of the episode, she just looks at Kumiko and the cuts and you're just <laughs> terrified. And it's like, oh God, what now? What now, girl? It's like everybody in Kumiko's life is so high maintenance. It's almost like it's a bunch of high school band geeks. Yeah, weird. <laughs> hormonal high school band geeks that are just absolutely losing their minds constantly under a lot of pressure from their family, from parents, from society. Uh, it's just the good shit. It's just good character drama mm -hmm. and extremely exciting, motivating um, band rags to riches thing where they just grow yeah. so much better than they were at the start. Um, and I watched this, the movie yesterday, which is like their whole second year. Mm -hmm. and it kind of occurs concurrently with Liz and the Bluebird. Liz and the Bluebird is still probably my favorite thing out of all of this just because mm -hmm. it's so fucking perfect. Um, but I think it gains a lot from me having watched the rest of it now. Cool. Um, and then the movie, we, we kind of talked about this privately, but it's the movie. It kind of feels like a season three that they squeezed into a movie. They had really squeezed it and really squeezed it. Like there's a whole, there's one whole character arc. That's like the first 20 minutes and then a whole character thing squeezed into 30 minutes. Yeah. Or in the show, you would have just been like, Huh, I wonder what her deal is for like eight episodes before it dug into it. Mm -hmm. um, so th that was probably the least satisfying sound euphonium thing out of 
the two seasons and the two movies I watched. Yeah. Um, I still liked the drama. I'm still very excited that there's going to be more now. That's there's really going to awesome. be more. It, t- it took a while to get there. <laughs> uh-huh. They're going to do a year three. They're going to have their third year. Kumiko's class, band president now. That's nuts. I, it's weird thinking about that because year two was so abbreviated. Yeah. It, it, it's very weird because year one is seasons one and two. Yeah, and it's 24 two, episodes and then a two hour movie. Yeah. And then a, an hour, 40 minute movie is all of the second year. They introduce a bunch of new characters and it's like, uh, where is my where is my class S? Or whatever they are in Cold Steel. Um, oh, so class seven. Class seven. Um, and then just today, to close it out, <gasps> the 10 anime movies, I watched two fucking Yuasa movies. Oh, two? Whoa. Uh-huh. I watched Lou Over the Wall. Yes, this is, is what I was hoping it was. Yes. It's, it's like a Vocaloid Mermaid movie. <laughs> oh, my God. It's not actually. There's like she sings and it's like a Vocaloid, but that is not a major component of it. It is a mermaid movie. Um, it's so cute and energetic. It's yeah, it's just really cute. Um, it, just, it reminded me of Ride Your Wave, or, which is also Yuasa. That's just kind of relentlessly upbeat and nice. And then when it does get dramatic at the end, it pays off in really neat ways. Mm. Um, it felt a lot about like creativity for me where mm-hmm. like all of these different characters are like have secret passions for making music or the, the main character's mom who goes off to Tokyo to become a dancer. And then the other characters that tried doing creative things and gave up and became fishermen, um, everyone having their own arc with that. And then like the way that, that the, the mermaid, the mer all the mer people feeling yeah. meaning different things to different characters based on kind of their relationships with their themselves. I thought it was very neat. I, I, I had a really nice time with it and I cried a lot at the end. Cool. Um, and then the very last movie, the one I finished just 10 minutes before the podcast, <laughs> I watched the night is short walk on girl. Oh, I've seen this one too. I, I fucking love this one. Um, I actually liked it more than Lou over the wall. I think because mm. it, it's a lot weirder. Um, Lou over the wall feels very restrained Yuasa, I think. Yeah, because it's making, think it's he's making a kid's movie, kind of. Yeah, it's, it's Yuasa making a nice kid's movie. And then Night of Short Walk On Girl is at just absolutely hilarious. Um, it's only like 90 minutes, and it's just, it's this one, it's this girl going on, she leaves a party and then decides to go on a pub crawl, basically. And then the night just blossoms from there yeah. into her <laughs> things escalate <laughs> and then things escalate it's just one very silly uproarious youthful night of merrymaking uh, and that's the whole movie is just like this one mm. kind of crazy night um and then the main girl is just like as is just this very fun energy where it's just like walking forward like i'm going to Meet my fate head on, whatever it is, like just jumping in, saying yes to everything, basically. Um, it's a movie that's having from- way more fun with itself than the viewer is it sometimes. I think it's just like that movie is so up- outwardly joyous and, and, and wild. Yeah, that's it's yeah. definitely one of my favorite you also works. That's awesome. Oh, nice. I didn't know you'd seen this one. Yeah, I watched this one a couple years ago. Cool. cool. Yeah, it's just fucking fun where they it's built. Divide into like these episodes where it's like the first is the is the is the pub crawl, which gets fucking nuts. And then the and then the used bookstore, which gets fucking nuts. <laughs> and then the drama, the school drama play. Oh, yeah. Which gets fucking yeah. nuts. Yeah. Uh, and then the payoff at the end is very cute oh, with, the, with really... the loser boy. Yes. <laughs> He's just following her around the whole night. His his game plan for the last year is that he likes this girl and he mm-hmm. wants her to fall for him. So he keeps arranging happenstance meetings where it's like, Oh, Hey, nice to, nice to, good to see you. Oh yeah. Just a coincidence. I happened to run into you here and then doing nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that's going to be the thing that, that takes you home, man. Yep. It's just like a total sad sack. It's a George then... Costanza, but anime form in a way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's rough. <laughs> because that's like exactly a George Costanza plan. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to be where she's at. 
<laughs> why, why wouldn't you say hi to me? I'm just there. <laughs> um, yeah, and then the ending with him is really cute. Mm-hmm. It's just like, okay, I'm gonna actually ask her out, and that, and that just resonates with me. Mm. Just like, just gotta, just do it. She's, she says yes the whole movie, and at the very end, he's willing to just like go for it a little bit, and I think that's nice. Um. And that was it. I watched fucking. I watched every anime movie on my <laughs> letterbox to watch list. There are no other anime movies left that are worthy of you, my consideration. Sort of related to the last one. Have you seen Tatami Galaxy? Yes, I have seen Tatami Galaxy. Okay. It's very good. There's still a lot of you asses I haven't. Like I still haven't seen Aizoken. Yeah, seriously, that one's real good. It's real good. I'm excited. You also don't miss. No, you also don't miss. It times really, two. just doesn't. Except for that one time. What was the one time? I remember you mentioned uh, that. Japan Sinks 2020. Oh, yeah. Japan Sinks 2020. Yeah. Huh. He can like the Netflix it. show after Devil Man Cry Baby. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, I did not finish it. It if It's... Man. <laughs> Is it just boring or... Uh... I think the, the directing is weird and it just made some very strange decisions. Gotcha. Yeah, for like an earthquake disaster thing, that could be that could feel feel a little weird. Yeah. I think. There was something where like they built up a character for the whole episode and then they just die at the end. And I'm just like, oh, oh what the fuck? <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see that. I can see that being a little weird. Um, but yeah, I've got a lot of anime series that I haven't watched besides all the sound euphonia. So I'm excited for that. Mm-hmm. But it was nice to just like get a big blast, just a huge spread of like different voices. <laughs> a big blast, a huge spread. Yeah. <laughs> like I got to see old Mecca, whatever Vampire Hunter D is, um, multiple um, got movies from the kite guy, um, Project Aiko, and a bunch of Yuasa, Sonny Phonium. I mean, yeah, Horus. I have not. Feels great. So much anime. I have not watched anything from the 60s. So I'll give you that. I wonder what the. <laughs> I watched one of the Unico movies recently. I think that might be like the oldest thing I've seen. Cool. I'm sure. Um, so I continued watching anime. Yeah, take us home, Rhett. What's with the rest <laughs> of the anime? Okay, this uh this was oh god, this was the show I was really, really excited to talk about on the podcast, and then you yeah. know it's been like a, a couple weeks. Um I watched a show called Akudama Drive. Oh, it is an anime original action show, and it's just fucking crazy. <laughs> it just, it spoke my language. The first episode, all, all the characters are like, the Akudama are mm-hmm. like named kind of after their profession. So the first episode is like, a guy named Cutthroat is about to be executed by the state. And four characters, Courier, Doctor, Brawler, and Hacker are all given individual missions to get down there and stop it from happening. Mm -hmm. And it's just this animation spectacle. I've never been so, like, back of your seat, like, blown away by how a show looks. And it's a TV show. I'm just like, what the hell is this thing? All the characters have a very kind of sharp, stylized look. They got, like, kind of lots of rings in their eyes. And I thought, oh, this kind of reminds me of how Danganronpa characters look. And then Mm -hmm. I looked it up. And Same this is by the design. author. Yeah. It's by the author of Dragon Rompa. Yeah, I recognize the name, so that's what I thought. So it's like, oh, okay. I'm a little more interested in this now. Um trying to talk about how the plot goes without it. So things happen and then like the next mission is these characters, they kind of band together, and then there's a, a normal girl kind of ends up in the group. On my anime list, her character name is listed as Ordinary Person. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one has an actual name in this show. But she tricks them in order to hang around because they were about to kill her. She says, oh, no, no, no. I'm Swindler. I, I trick people. So, like, in doing <laughs> that, she kind of wasn't lying because she fooled them. But then you've got, like, these superhumans, like... Uh, anime is hard to talk about for me. I don't know. It's just... That's for, that's a cool setup. Yeah. That's unfortunate that anime is hard to talk about for you when that is 80% <laughs> of what you bring to this program, Red. Uh, that is an unfortunate <laughs> That is an unfortunate truth for you. 
<laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I don't think I'm great think at talking about games at either. Um, so basically, the second part of the show is like, oh, there's a thing on a train we got to get. And, you know, it's like the one train in the world. Also, it's like this dystopian future. There's only two cities left. and They don't mm -hmm. really elaborate on anything besides outside Japan. It's just... It's a very stylized and cool action show, and it made me feel a lot of emotions at parts. Like it really hits home with powerful scenes when it needs to. And I didn't know that people didn't like the ending. So that's for some reason, for you, that's mal for you. Yeah, because it's like I was kind of shocked that this show had kind of a mixed opinion on from that site. Because uh -huh. I'm just like wow, this was the raw shit I've ever seen. And then he go on Mal and they're, they're like, I would have liked this show if I was 12 years old and they had kept the basic social commentary out of this show. And I'm just like, oh, fuck God. off, shut up. Uh, um, this show screams fuck cops at a lot of points. Good. This is also a show where I was watching it and realized, oh, I'm going to need to, uh, going to need to watch the Blu-ray version, huh? Because there are, it starts off relatively normal, and then by about the midpoint, it's like, oh, half that character's body just turned black, and oh, there's an arm over there. Oh, wonder what just happened. Wonder what could have caused this. It gets excessively violent. That is what, did you watch it on a streaming service? Because they usually don't get edited versions these days. I watched what aired on TV in Japan for half of it. Mm. And then I watched the Blu-ray for, <laughs> for the second half. It was really funny when I switched because, you know, episode seven or eight or so starts off normally. And then all of a sudden, civilian gets pushed to the ground and then their head just is gone like a few frames later. Like, oh, right. OK, I'm not watching the censored one anymore. <laughs> it is just this this is the show i'd recommend to polly mm. if you're interested in checking something out that right. has that ultra violent 80s flair to it with you know i had a good time with it i don't know yeah, this, this looks great it made me cry a bunch at the end <laughs> good which is you know the one goal of anime name one thing Absolutely. that hasn't name one that hasn't Great with fireflies. Mm. The Akudama Drive <laughs> is on Crunchyroll, is the thing. But no, okay. But I don't okay. know if it's like, I don't know if it's the uncensored version or not. You'd have to go look because, mm. you know, I don't know. Yeah. That looks like a show that it requires. It gets really violent. It looks like a show it, that requires the, the, the premium yeah. service to watch. So I know they used to have a lot. Uh, I, know they got, I know they got a lot of stuff that you can watch in every free, but it looks like you need... Uh, I think everything from a certain point is like, oh yeah, we get a, you get episode one, and then you have yeah. <laughs> everything else is oh whoops premium. whoops whoops sorry chat I loaded it up and now I can actually watch it and then I played a very loud guitar riff but that that'll wake anybody <laughs> up in chat oops. who was who was previously asleep <laughs> so that was like cool moving on to the next thing that was like my number one show. Mm -hmm. And then I kept watching anime for a few more weeks. Oh, man. <laughs> John already licking his lips. And then something really weird happened. Yeah. I don't necessarily know if this was actually my favorite show. I think Akudama Drive is definitely the best show. Oh, my God. I watched, so I watched Princess Connect Redrive. Yes! <laughs> yes! I, and I remember... Watching season one when it aired two years ago, you know, which was actually 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I believe talking about it on the podcast and giving it a six on Mel and being like, I didn't really like this one. <laughs> so just so season two came out this year and it was like, hey, we finished the story. And I, I like stories that have endings. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. Actually. So I decided, OK, I'm going to give this one a fair shot. We're going to start over. We're going to rewatch season one. And season one is still fine so this is a show from it's a show based on a mobile gotcha game with a lot of a billion cute girls princess connect and the director of the anime is the same guy who did konosuba Very good and, start. and the show is a boy and his three female companions going on adventures in the guild that they're in there's a lot of similarities to be drawn there they don't really just a little bit just a little bit it's 
But I think if you go in expecting Konosuba, like I did for season one, where even if you're like Konosuba light, 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 like mm-hmm. even just getting a whiff of that, if you really are just there for Konosuba action, you're going to be disappointed because mm-hmm. it's really not that. And I think like saying, oh, the show just isn't funny is kind of mean. It's just a very, I think, more lighthearted style of humor mm-hmm. where Konosuba is just kind of a vicious, raunchy comedy a lot of the time. Yes. And this is just like, hey, it's it's cute girls going on mildly humorous adventures. It's a little less edgy. Uh, significantly so. Probably because, the, you know, they have a licensor. You know, mm-hmm. the, stu- the gotcha gods are watching over being, hey, you can't actually sexualize these girls. We're watching you. No, no R18 jokes here, buddy. So it's it's very, you know, restrained a lot of the time, mm-hmm. which is actually also kind of refreshing that it's not sex jokes all the time. Yeah. Because a lot of anime, well, not, anime not is. a lot of anime is, especially like shonen stuff, I think, which I do, do generally kind of stay away from now. Like mm-hmm. My Hero Academia just having kind of like some really rough character portrayals in there. Mm-hmm. Where the girls are just like, yeah, we're we're here too. We don't do anything, but we're here. <laughs> or I guess you, you said one Hunt- of us. Yeah, I think you said like Hunter Hunter just doesn't have girls. No. <laughs> okay. They they introduce two girls in like the third arc, and their yeah. superpowers are super powered vacuuming and super powered needle and thread. It's pretty. That's great. so much worse than I expected. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty rough. Holy shit. Yeah, Hunter and Hunter is so just like okay boy shit. Yeah, Princess Connect is like the super polar opposite, where like ninety nine percent of the characters are girls. There's so the main boy Yuki, like mm-hmm. he talks in a way that a silent protagonist would. <laughs> it's really strange. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start saying that about real people in real life. Just to, to I have never heard a real them. person talk like this. <laughs> He talks like really nasally and like simple sent simple sentences, usually one word at a time. He kind of just goes, hmm, a lot of the time, like just nodding in agreement. He's just very there. And like the three main girls are the ones driving like literally everything. I, I don't know gotcha what his game. Gotcha yeah. game syndrome. But they kind of make it work. I don't know. It's weird. It's so funny to me that Gudako in Fake Go has so much like fanon personality um, that is backed up by all of the side material. And then mm-hmm. in all the official adaptations of the movie, they just have the complete blank slate boy as the main character. Oh, mm, that's unfortunate. Yep. Because you can choose between a, the male or female lead in Fake yeah. Go. And then the anime adaptations pick the dude one who nobody cares about. Dude, I feel like stuff like that, they always have the stats to be like, actually 80% of people pick the dude. Oh, cool. Fair. I think that's what happened with Mass Effect, where it's like, oh yeah, you know that 80% of people actually pick Male Shep, right? And everyone online is like, no, Fem Shep! Fem Shep's the real one, but like, the actual audience is not. That's good to know. Um, so Princess Connect also has a decent amount of action. And it's like season one is very mysterious. Like aside from the cute girls doing cute things stuff, there's a lot of intrigue and like mysteries into the world that never really goes anywhere, which is frustrating. Mm-hmm. But that's why I want to rewatch it to kind of just brush up on all that, re- see all the characters again, and then watch season two, <laughs> which is, hey, we did everything you wanted. <laughs> They pay everything off pretty much. Awesome. Awesome. It's just, it wastes like almost no time going full action, like right from the first few episodes, which Mm -hmm. you kind of expect because these shows, you know, they always kind of start with the big animation pushes to get people hooked in watching. But then like episodes four and five are like the big midpoint story arc. And I'm like, that's pretty early. Geez, what's going on here? Like it just, there's a couple episodes that are still like introducing more characters. That's the other thing about this show, because it has like the ca- hundred character cast gotcha girls. Mm-hmm. 
almost every episode introduces like a whole guild of like three or four new girls and it gets a little exhausting in season one because so many of these characters are like super flat personalities. Mm -hmm. I think season two is a lot better about having characters that are not all speaking in the super high pitched anime girl voice and like distinguishing themselves a little more from each other. (laughs) Season one is a little rough on that front. It was really weird where there's one character that if he likes that just gets like the most minimal amount of screen time possible, God. like two or three lines in episode in a season in, ep- in season one and then appears in the background like three times in season two, like does not ever speak again. <laughs> it's rough. There's there's definitely maybe a few too many characters. Um. So that they're building the intrigue, they're setting up story stuff, and then episode nine or so of season two, all those characters come back and they have like a big party, and I'm just like, okay, you're, the show is saying that all the characters are back in play now. Everybody is here in this one location right now, and the season so far is not pulling any punches action wise or budget wise. Cool. It would be really cool if the last four episodes of the show were a huge battle scene like just fucking go all out (laughs) and that was the last time i and then that was like the thing i tweeted at one night point and then i watched those four episodes in the row and then and the next thing i did is i tweeted 10 out of 10 beautiful Beautiful. they did 100 percent what i actually wanted which i did not expect it gets it gets a little exhausting right at the end when it's just the fourth episode in a row of not stopping. And it's, oh, it's the final boss has a fourth phase or whatever. Yes. <laughs> but it's not just that they go, it they go so big with the action that it feels unearned for the show that it was prior. And I get how some people were disappointed by season this. It basically goes from comedy show to action show. And with more significantly more drama, like the last four episodes, jokes just leave the room. It's just not a comedy anymore. It's such a weird shift. and I get people being upset by that, but I was like, with the way season one had been building, I was so, so fucking satisfied by the way it went. Cool. Because the main thing is that it's not just that they do the action, it's that they pay off the one character relationship that's been bubbling the whole time. And it's not who you even think it's going to be going in. And they just, things come to a head in a really climactic way. And I was crying for like the whole last four episodes and then crying for like an hour afterwards. My eyes hurt from this fucking show. I'm not saying it was the best, but it was my favorite. Good. It was like, this is... Look it up in the dictionary of like red aesthetic. This this in Simpho gear, basically. Good. Here's like 50 girls battling all at once for the fate of their world. Good. I had a good time with this one. Excellent. Uh, what a turnaround, I just, huh? I just like that it's another collect another for the collection of I didn't like three fourths of it. And then I like that last like- fourth. <laughs> No, you liked season two. Yeah. I liked all of season two. I think at yeah. least half of it was in the great category. I liked season one, one more. That's the other. Okay. Another thing about season one is when I first watched it, I was doing the very dumb thing of trying to watch shows at work on lunch break mm-hmm. and usually falling asleep by the end. Oh. So, like, it's just an, a kind of a miserable experience way to watch a show when mm-hmm. I find myself nodding off. Rewind 20 seconds, keep going. Oh, closed my eyes again, missed a subtitle, rewind. Like, it, yeah, that's pretty brutal. It's sometimes I would just go, oh, I'm just not actually really watching the show and I don't count it. Mm-hmm. But it, I don't know. It, I didn't feel like I gave it a fair enough shot. I was just like, oh, this isn't as funny as Konosuba. And, and also, it's not having any story payoff at the end, which was rough. Mm-hmm. Like season one just ends with a big battle that kind of meant nothing into the grander scheme of things. Whereas season two, like finished the story. It sounds yeah. like. Oh, I think there is some way they could possibly do more, but I really don't think they will. Like 
it goes so big. Like, I don't know how you would continue from here in a satisfactory manner. But also, I know nothing about the gotcha game, but there is stuff I know from the gotcha game that hasn't come into play yet. So who knows? <laughs> Somehow the one big spoiler that I know for the gotcha game doesn't happen in the show. <laughs> so there is a way for it to continue. Maybe they'll do a movie. I think that might make the most sense. Cool. I thought Polly was going to say it's another thing where, oh, gotcha game funded one of the best anime you've ever seen. Because between Simpho Gear, Revue Starlight, and now Princess Connect. Isn't that, gotcha also, isn't that, isn't that Yuki Yuna? Yeah, but Yuki Yuna's not on the same level. Okay. I'm saying perfect shows. <laughs> Just okay. wait. Hey, wh where's the sound euphonium gotcha game? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were... <laughs> Never mind. Just thinking oh. how the how the band how director could scold you in the game. Oh my god. I thought you were going to be level 50 by the time you came to see me again. <laughs> You didn't do your you didn't do your dailies. You didn't make those rolls. I thought you were gonna get I thought you were gonna get three different five star copies of Asuka so that you could ascend her to the highest level of euphonium playing. I guess you didn't care enough. Oh god, the guilt trip. That'd be like the true way to do a gotcha. I, just I, give it to them. Just make me just go ahead and go all in on making people feel like shit for not giving you enough money. I asked you when you when you booted up the game, do you want to commit to having a maxed out Asuka? And you said yes. You could have just played it and had fun, but you said that you wanted to do this, so that's why I'm pushing you so hard. And the whole game is PvP. <laughs> it was also very funny um posting my 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 the the Yuri ships I think are not as major a component of of Sound Euphonium as I think mm -hmm. they need to be with some people. I did come away from season two feeling very shipping Kumiko and Asuka very strongly. And then you immediately went, no, uh, no, no. <laughs> I, I've seen that show twice. I still kind of hate Asuka. Yes. I'm very weird. Oh, she's awful. OK, <laughs> Absolutely. OK. Oh, oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, no. She's awful. OK. I'm saying I ship her. That's that's different. <laughs> God, just the scene where just the scene where Kumiko is yelling at her, and then instead instead of Shoshi also just walks up and kisses her. You can just you can just see it, right? I right, am done. Okay, I guess we're done. Yep, that's it. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of a shorter one this time. But we it had eighty thousand anime, and he yep. only and we and we didn't even make two hours. Yep. Blast of I mean, I do have a whole bunch. I'm not, I watched Spy Family and I didn't really care for it. <laughs> and then I watched Princess Connect immediately afterwards, and it's like, yes, this now is I'm so home. much better. So much better. Fucking Spy Family. People think like Spy okay. Family when, they, when they're sleeping on Princess Connect season two. You know what really drives me nuts in Spy Family? Yeah. The whole premise felt like kind of a lie. Like, I get that the dad is a spy and that is the main thing. The mom being an assassin doesn't come into play like ever it feels she like yeah hits. she's just kind of there to be hot in a dress yeah her character isn't what i thought it was going to be which is fine but she only kills somebody in the intro in her character introduction what you, you never see it happen again what so that just felt like kind of bait and switch for me especially with the way the internet lost their fucking mind over her yeah they this i had not seen anything from the show at all and I had kind of thought oh like this is going to be like you know some cool dynamic at play here where you've got a spy and assassin and they're trying to have a normal family with a normal daughter and it's just like oh yeah. and it sounds like the show actually doesn't do anything with that yeah kind of I think my favorite episode was number five and apparently th they blew that one up from what it was in the original manga mm. It's a very weird premise to have for just a, ga a gag manga. Yeah, g even going in knowing, hey, it's not an action thing, it's a comedy, I right. was still kind of let down. Ugh. Anime. So huh? goes. Any any other ones that jump out at you from the from the, the swath of anime you watched? I think we're good. All right, cool. Oh.
Go well, ahead. I guess that is going to do it for us here at this podcast that you're listening to. So we're going to make preparations to get on out of here. But before we do, John Thayer, tell the internet folks at home where they can find you. Farawaytimes.itch.io And Rhett, tell the internet folks at home where they can find you. MyAnimeList.net slash profile slash Rhett. There you go. You got an actual... It was something actually related to you this time. Been a while. It's where I'm at on that fucking site. Clicking update episode. Yeah. Over like every times. 10 minutes. Like yeah. I look it up and then it's gone up you in could, the last 10 minutes. You could map all of Rhett's episode update clicks to a game of Diablo and you would be able to at least reach <laughs> level 27. And you can find me at twitch.tv slash polyhead where I do whatever it is that I do. So... We'll get on out of your hair now. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. Much love. Thanks for downloading. And remember, we are the podcast that loves you. We're the only ones that love you. All right. Cap, you literally came in as we're ending. Good job. (laughs) Everybody, welcome a flat cap to the room. (laughs) How's it going, Cap? That's very funny. Yeah, we are. We literally just signed and stamped the end of the Oops. episode. <laughs> it and was a shorter one. It was a shorter one. I did literally have nothing to talk about this episode, so Oops. It, that's how it goes. It just be like that. Who knew? Who knew? Anyway, I'm gonna shoot everybody on over to Toad two two four eight four, who is playing Vampire Survivors. Um, that is a game that is very comfy to chill and watch people play. Um, and we're going to get on out of here. So thanks for stopping by everybody. We'll catch you next time. Much love and all that fun stuff. Bye-bye.